Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on a 30 year old from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I believe he is the first and only pro hockey player to come out of Wyoming and was even drafted to the show, folks. He is a legend of the shed and with the Portland Winterhawks playing in 75 playoff games, folks, in four years where he became a first team all-star of the WHL and a champion started a Twix craze in Hungary that has followed him, followed him to the shed's honey hole of Cardiff, Wales after a two year stop in beautiful white water, Germany. And he now gets showered with Twix in Herning, Denmark. He is a confirmed gamer, entertainer, and winner since his first of approximately 20 trips to the shed has had the best save percentage in the EIHL was named a second team EHL all-star like yours truly and led my devils to the playoff championship. And he is now having his way with the Danish metal league. he's running such a muck. He's only let his backup get involved in two matches all season folks. <laughs> and he's sporting a 2.11 <clears throat> goals against average and a 922 save percentage. They've put his picture up on the wall at the arena. Oh, and he won again, folks becoming a Danish Pokal champion. And if I was betting, man, it's probably going to run a muck of the playoffs. Welcome back to the shed, Matt Carruth. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Good intro. Good intro. Yeah. Thank you. I'm practicing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of practice. A lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. <laughs> hey, I, I've seen you practice. You practice hard too, right? <laughs> I, I go pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get into how we know each other. Um, is this your third time to the shed since being in Denmark? Second or third, yeah. I think when I first got here and then midway through. and then I didn't really know when it would start, but um, I know we I had John right when you were getting there, right? And I was like, do they? I remember writing a note, Twix in Denmark, question mark. And then I had you back. Yeah, this has got to be third time. Third, then, yeah, third time. Then you, you got like, you were up for the shutout record, right? Five straight. I was, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Lost right? that, one some, that was a bad goal. Was bad it? Goal. The one that broke it was a bad one? Oh, just like a, like a bad bounce. Not really a bad goal. It's like, yeah, you're never going to be happy when it went in where you <laughs> No, I mean, no. you can only have so much luck for so long. <laughs> uh, so how we know each other though, is people do throw Twix on the ice. Do they still do that in Herning? Cause I saw oh, yeah. was poster pick. I saw one beside the trophy. I just checking out pictures. Right. And there's a Twix right in front of the trophy and just makes it not such a big world, you know? <laughs> yeah. Our fans, fans are bringing them on the road now too. So that's fun. Uh, that's yeah. fun. Really? They're throwing Twix at other people's bards now. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like established, a lot of like... established dominance. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's your barn, right? <laughs> <laughs> really? They're throwing, is anybody getting in trouble over it? Cause Sheffield, they canceled fun, right? Mosey ran too much of a muck and they had too much Denmark fun. That was fun. You know, they're a uh, fun loving people. So yeah. Yeah. Not much controversy, right? They're just happy. No. They say it's the happiest country in the world, don't they? Not a lot of drama, not much going on. Just, win just chocolate and, and winning hockey and <laughs> relax. Yeah. Well, uh, pretty neat though, that they're still throwing Twix on the ice and that like for your story, you know, someday when you're in your shed that it started out in Hungary, which folks, this is also how we know each other, right? My last year of college hockey at Western Michigan university, they put this young punk in my hotel room on the road Jeff Lavecchio, because he lived right, he ate right, he exercised, he did all the things I should be doing, right? And they put him with me to teach the wily old veteran how to live. And um, and we had a blast. And Vex is one of my one of my best buddies. He was the one that started Twix originally in Hungary, right? Yeah, he did like a bit of like an interview for I think it might have been Twitter or something, and then people started handing me on the streets, and then. In Sekish Raver, they have like a tradition of throwing candy on the ice, anyways, after a win. But uh, kind of like weren't they greasy, garbage ones though? They're yeah, greasy ones. fifty cent candy bars. But we're uh, better than that, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, the shed, the shed <laughs> fans are better than that. That's and right. uh, so yeah, he said I like the Twix, and and I'll start. And that's kind of where the the UK chocolate throwing began. You took you took it over. Well, and then I had John 
in the shed. It was, I believe, Mosey came back to Cardiff and scored the OT winner. And he came in, into the shed and said, well, that's like one of my best buddies. And I just scored on him like OT <laughs> winner, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I had him on to talk about scoring an OT winner against your old team. Because, you know, like when I left Beatingheim and I had some sour thoughts when I played with Halbron, I sure wanted to win. And then when I saw yeah. Mosey left and scored the OT winner, I just chuckled. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He kind of spilled the beans on the whole thing, didn't he? But uh, that's how it started, right? We brought up Twix and then then you came on and then and then you just kept winning and then it just kept getting bigger and better. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Now now everyone's got a little candy bar in the UK, it seems like. (laughs) Well, I I hope you're not getting jealous out there in Denmark because I am just having fun. You are no, no, you are no, the no, one that please, started it. Take I'm just over. having fun. Um, but I think it's funny that I never even played in Manchester and there's a chocolate storm <laughs> happening, right? Like that's cool. Yeah, they got some good people on there at Manchester now, though. You got uh, Ginner running it and Ginner and Fenner. That's Ginner. why this all started, because I like those guys. They came to the shed, yeah. the shed guys, and I'm like, geez, you know, sometimes winning's contagious and fun is contagious. And then when you start winning and having fun, and then you know, I think. People throwing chocolate on the ice is fun, isn't it? It's good. Any anytime you can throw stuff on the ice, I think as a fan is a lot it, of fun. Right, and it can it starts like a tradition. That I think it's really neat that in Manchester people are like it's just a storm though, right? It's not Twix. We're just having a storm, but everybody can kind of pick which one they want, right? Yeah, do whatever you want. I like that. Are um, they in match tonight? Are they they're in playing Cardiff? in Cardiff, yeah. So uh, I don't know if there'll be chocolate. I don't know if I don't know if we're traveling well on a weeknight uh, with our chocolate from Manchester, and then I don't know if Cardiff's going to get behind the uh, whirls for the girls because you heard about this, right? <laughs> Started a, a bench clear in, uh, in the Cardiff Junior Devils match over the whirls for the girls and the Buenos for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So uh, oh. Cardiff didn't throw the, for the devils, they, they didn't uh, throw the worlds for the girls or Buenos for the boys. People went to the actual Cardiff junior devils and threw it for Miley, Drazy and rah, rah. Thanks guys. Right. That's cool. That's pretty fun for the kids though. Like it's pretty awesome. You imagine being that age and people show up to your game, and start chucking chocolate on the ice. And then like for the kids that got to come on, like pretty neat to be on a podcast, right? Is it a fun? <laughs> yeah. With their big, big idol wall, you know? Uh, fun stuff. <laughs> when I saw those kids getting after it over the chocolate, it just it. melted my heart. I hadn't started a line brawl in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> to do it from so so far away too has got to be pretty uh pretty fun. It is. It's gonna be fun to see all those kids when I come over for Batchy's testimonial, right? I don't know. I'm still waiting for my invite in the mail. Must be something wrong with the. I bet you. I bet. I bet. I saw one of the goalies uh, was Joseph Myers, who's already in Cardiff, right? That's a pretty cheap player to get get in the net, right? And then I guess I'm too expensive. I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully it could come support Batchy, right? Be cool. Yeah. I've never met. I've never met you in person. I feel like I know (laughs) you. I'll be in the stands. Maybe I'll paint my stomach for you or something. Are you covered? I want to. Yeah. Like as of right now, I want to go. It depends. I think a lot of people are going to come. Sure, but... I think it's going to be a heck of a time for Batchy. You should yeah, come. I, you I should just be honestly just want to come and support Batchy. So yeah, I think it, a little bit. It's and having it in the off season is fun, right? When everybody can let their hair down and then. Really... I didn't know that there was. They did them during the season until I've just kind of been like checking in on some stuff, and then obviously listening to a few of yours and looking on social media, like people are doing them mid season. It's wild. Well, and I think that's normal. So, like, um, I'm invited back to Germany to the last guy that just came on. Renee Schofs is getting his jersey retired April 1st in Beatingheim, and I was invited. Gosh darn it, it's breaking my heart. I can't go because he was starting to list some of the shed guys coming. It's like, yeah. whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, what a time that would be. <laughs> It'd be like the German version of Batchy's testimonial. Um, Two thousand but- bucks for three days. Right. That's also an issue. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, um, that guy's going to do that, but he, that's during the season. Right. So then I believe like the real team's getting mixed with their buddies um, oh, yeah. and uh, they play a game, but that's during the season. And like the players will be like, I don't know, getting ready for like playoffs or play downs. Well, beating I'm getting relegated. Right. So they're done done then. So I guess maybe it is the off season. <laughs> It is. It would be the off season because I think they're that's not an early play. off season, eh? Yeah, they're not having playdowns in the Dell because of the 
COVID thing. Because they, they just relegated up. straight up. Yeah, two teams relegated right away. They should make playdowns. That at least gives it another competition, make some more money with gates, you'd think. But just thinking out loud, right? I don't know. We're just, you know, a couple yeah. guys in the shed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Business side and my brain got took over. I've been <laughs> in KPIs all day, bad. It's been <laughs> I mean, it's been a time. But five in the last two days, you know. But Oof. you know, do my best, run amok, great. <laughs> Hit the shed for lunch. <laughs> Anyways, another way we know each other is you got you started another craze, legs and eggs with Mac and legs Rosie. And eggs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had you two on together, you know. That. <laughs> What's that? My mom's a big fan of how we keep bringing it up. Well, she's we always should, like, why do we keep should, bringing that up? I don't know. I don't know if we should keep I, bringing it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, like there are like t-shirt, there are like t-shirts out there and hoodies that say it. So yeah. um, that was because of a rookie party. You didn't even want to be there, right? You no, didn't want to be no. there. You were just no. doing your job. It's like the erotic photo shoot I had in Germany. I was just doing my job. They told me I had to do it. Um, I didn't want to be there, but it's a funny memory, right? Yeah, so. my job my job was to have fun, you know. Sometimes you just gotta lean into it a bit. And, um, you know, the veterans are always, you know, peer pressuring the rookies and making them have fun so in pro hockey. Pressure. It's just, yeah. You I don't even know if you'd be allowed to do it anymore. Right. I don't know how much fun happens anymore. No. I, Too I, many I, phones out now. Yeah. Is hockey still hockey? We're trying to keep it that way. I don't know. We are trying. I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, another way we know each other. Just speak of this because it came up with Renee Schultz, who's a beauty. Played twenty years in beating high, and the guy getting his years retired. But um, <clears throat> we discussed that uh, my picture was on the arena, like bigger than life size, um, in beating high, and then uh, they asked me to kindly leave. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> but you know, it's not a soft spot at all for me. But um, I saw you now are on the side of the Herning Arena. I am. Yeah, my ugly mugs up there. Luckily, it's mostly hidden by a uh, mask so it's not too bad is it just your face that really big I yeah mean, it's like my chest up chest and up. I, I think it's just for the fan shop there that they have it just it has the website underneath well it's nice to be on the side of arenas like that i think it's neat but yeah mine was like on the wall and i was dressed as like a knight with a sword and a, you know a helmet and body armor and i was making like a face like we're going to war and you know they had it on the old arena and then they moved to the new arena and asked me to kindly leave and put new players on the arena right that will happen that's hockey right and been long enough in hockey someone's not going to someone's going to kick you out eventually <laughs> well yeah especially if you get fat place <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so you guys did win the Pokal, eh? Let's talk about that now. Yeah, it was it was um obviously it was a bit of a weird it's a bit of a weird tournament, to be fair. It's uh in what I way guess the first three months of the season or something like that go into if you're in the top four after a certain date, then you make this um final four tournament. Like right it was a final that. four tournament. That's not what we. I, well, I guess what it's called. It's called the final four. Was um, it all one weekend? Yeah, it was just so we played Odin's the first game, and then the winner of the next game played the next day. Oh, so it's like the playoffs in the UK. It's a bit like the playoffs in the UK. My like, yeah, but with I guess more games stage go before, into it, yeah, because it's all the first. Two so three I played games. in the Pokal final in Denmark, and what's interesting is. Heron and beat the wheels off of us that night. I think we lost four nothing in the finals with Sunder <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, I think we lost four nothing, but I'm pretty sure we started. It's like during like almost exhibition, which started regular season. You're playing the Pokal games too, kind of like the challenge cup in the UK. But then I remember having a one game playoff in Voyance. So I don't remember what the semifinals were like, though. I don't it wasn't the same weekend. Yeah, so we just had, we just all went to Alberg. All four teams went to Alberg. Um, they got a great setup there. Yeah, they did. Uh, like for every for everyone to fit in the same arena and have their own locker room and stuff, it was good. But um, yeah, we all went to Alberg, and it's kind of like the UK playoff a bit, um, just kind of one and done. And then if you win, you're in. But um, so yeah. there are fans from all four teams. Games, then? There wasn't wasn't uh, any like different games. They just took the regular season games into account for the first two months. And then really? set a date for whoever's in the top four at this date are 
that's and, not what I played when I was there, then that's different. You know what else is interesting? You're going into playoffs. Did you well, get what pl- what uh, what what place did you guys finish? Uh we finished second. We could have finished first, but we finished second. Um, so isn't it weird? I bet you it's the same that first gets to choose out of five to eight who they play. No, they choose what I don't think so anymore. Um, that's one you don't even eight, know. He plays seven, so now it's back to must be back. To oh, normal. either that or that's how people chose. Thing. It used to be a thing when I went into the playoffs with Sundar Yuski. I remember they had a night of it where the coaches all show up. And they basically like announce, we're going to play this team. We're going to play this team. And we, we finished first and we chose to play the fifth place team. Yeah. Because, I guess it's whoever you match up with probably better would be. Well, and because their imports bet against their own team and um, got kicked out of the league. <laughs> That's, that might be frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. So they brought in some new guys and uh, well, we thought we could have our way with them and we did. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was a bit of a nail biter. Like we almost forced overtime, and then Alberg lost. I think if we would have won in regulation that last game, um, we would have been first. But then it was that tight, play, eh? We'd have to play Rungstead, um, and they're pretty the soft. reindeers. Yeah, the reindeers. <laughs> Rungstead and uh, uh, Frederikshavn are the two teams that we would have played, and we end up playing Frederikshavn. Frederikshavn, eh? The, I played at the old barn there. Don't they have a new one? I don't know. It's pretty like the ice is nice. Every at the beginning of the year, the ice was really nice. Last time we played there it was just a bit hot, I think. But uh, I don't know. Decent building. I don't think it's new, but well, I guess I it's well, it's be about ten years old, nine years old. It's been out of the game a while. <laughs> might be ten years old. Yeah. Might be might be ten. <laughs> yeah, I played in I played in the old one. <laughs> yeah, okay. That one wasn't there yet. <laughs> Shoot, I'm old. <laughs> This nice that really nice cool. that you young guys let me still talk to you, you know, be part of the game <laughs> still, even though I'm old and you know, in my shed. <laughs> um, okay, so what was the what who'd you play in the files of the Poke Cal? What was the score? Um, I want to say four two or something like that. Uh against Alberg. They won the they and that was in two. their home arena. Home arena, yeah, yeah. Um I think they had a tough game against or no, they they waxed Saunders like six one or something like that, six two the night before. Um, so we were a bit a uh, bit nervous going into that final game, but um, boys came out solid. We just played played our style of hockey and. What is your style of hockey? What what what's the Herding Blue Foxes up to these days? Because I when I played against them back in the day. Um, they gave her, they, that team worked extremely hard. Um, they kept it very simple. And I think their coach, whatever his name was, a legend of that town. He had the imports, the Danish guys, they were all, they were all working the same way and playing the same hard style. I don't know what's yeah, like I now. Mean, sounds like exactly our team. Um, obviously we got some pretty skilled forwards who can create offensively and they're kind of given free reign once they get, uh, on that side of the blue, but, um, like in our D zone, it's pretty, pretty compact. You know, guys are blocking shots. Like you don't even have to ask guys to block shots or do certain things in the D zone. Guys are just willing to do it. And uh, everyone's pulling the rope the same way as they say right now. So hopefully we can keep doing that. Tomorrow. Seems like that you, you got a team full of winners, right? They know what it takes. Yeah. We got some, we got some studs for sure. Uh, one guy I wanted to ask about is the big fellow there. He hasn't played many games this year. Bow <laughs> Hansen, the guy we talked, oh, I know Hansen, we talked about yeah, it before. He's, uh, he's, he's pretty a, special. Yeah. But yeah. he hasn't been playing much. Eh? Is he going to be um, back? Yeah. Just, I don't know. A couple of injuries here and there, nothing crazy, but, uh, I think more or less just getting him healthy for playoffs was the, was the main goal. And boy, did he ever come back with that final four weekend with a little piss and vinegar. I think he scored maybe four goals in two games. Oh really? I didn't know he was back. I just look at the, the research team just gets hot, and I don't know what's going on. You know, yeah, I can't look he, up all these game sheets. There's a lot of hockey goes on in the world, eh? He is very good. He might be one of the better players I've played with in Europe. Yeah, sure. that's cool. And he's a Dane, eh? Those guys really help a team, eh? When you got yeah. the local fellows that are, can run a muck. Yeah, he is uh, pretty special. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> did you guys get after it then? After? 
because I know we exchanged a couple messages when I congratulated you and I said when you win you can do whatever you want <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> sorry uh, being a guy but I didn't mean to <laughs> we had some guys that uh, took advantage of that for sure um and you should fellas you don't win that many should, times championships are fun or trophies are fun we still got a championship later to win later on this uh this year but uh yeah. the uh yeah, we the bus rolled up to the walking street. Fans had the flares going and everything. It was awesome. And then uh how far of a ride are we talking? How far is Alborg to uh, like hour forty five? So six beers, seven. Yeah, you know, we there was some beers six in the bus. Definitely some beers bus had on the bus for sure. Mm-hmm. Um and uh we were we were out by the time we got home. Typical hockey players, you know, run out of beer. Um rolled out and i that's the team's uh, fault you can't be running out of beer after a championship be better i was lucky lucky enough to like walk or just have the trophy in my hand as we got there and like walked out with it and like fans were celebrating we had the boom box going outside and stuff and i don't know i couldn't really tell where we were there's so much smoke and stuff from the flares and i just started walking down the street like all right we're going to the bar let's go and everyone just stayed back and i was in the bar by myself with the trophy for like five minutes and they were all out on the walking street they're all on the walking street just having a time but um yeah the team took care of us at the bar so that was uh obviously super nice of them yeah it is um good job Harry. that's nice i don't think i i don't think i went and ordered a drink from the bar once like the guys were just ordering drinks for everyone and passing them out uh to all the players so uh winning's fun isn't it Winning is a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 I think that I think eventually the trophy might have got taken away from us at some point during the night. Yeah. Um, just because it was just for protection. It was becoming a liability, I think, yeah. on the dance floor. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. You, they yeah, can get damaged. Back, Trophies so can get yeah. damaged, can't they? <laughs> yeah. We got it back all in one piece. No, no major dents. So. Hmm. It lives, lives to fight another year. <laughs> well, that is uh, one of the pics I've seen of you that I've posted because I'm very proud of you winning all the stuff because winning's fun. Uh, but was you jumping into the glass with the trophy? You were like showing everybody like, this is how we're going to handle this thing tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, no. You weren't care. worried about, you've no. jumped into the glass so many times that you can do it with that size of a trophy and feel confident you're not going to break it in front of everybody. Yeah, or, or were you just running a muck and realizing you could do whatever you want because you won? Yeah, the landing was a bit scary. I think I think the ice was a bit soft and confetti was everywhere, but the jump the jump felt good. The landing was a bit eh. confetti could get to you. That's for yeah. sure. And the Twix on the ice, right? Confetti, confetti, Twix skates on the mm-hmm. ice, not a good mix. Um, yeah, I've seen a couple photos of you jumping into the glass this year and you see the people's looks on their face and for me it's just it's hockey like you see yeah. the people in the crowd they're entertained they're having so much fun you're having fun that you're winning and you can tell how competitive you are and how much each win means but the looks on the people's faces in the crowd just it makes my day when i see that yeah. <laughs> it does some people are like look a bit nervous like it might come through and some are just excited like obviously a couple rows up they're safe but right and at the start of the year they're probably like what who is this guy what <laughs> is going on here <laughs> right yeah a little i don't think too many people celebrate like that so i'm glad i got like to put a little signature on it right yeah that's you got you got to do uh legendary things to be a legend i guess right <laughs> um that's cool though um what else do I got about that game? I wrote down some stuff. So was there a lot of your fans there? If it was a final four weekend? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, that, I don't know what that building packs out in, but uh, apparently it was sold out the day before because all the was in it. So it was uh, seemed to be a hostile environment, but uh, our guys quieted them down pretty quick with a couple goals and we just kind of. All boards. Is that got Thomas spelling on it? I think so. Yeah. He was a player when I played. He'd be old now. Maybe, he was like a, tw- he was the, tw- he was a 20 year old up and comer when I played there. He was drafted fifth round of the show. He was my winger for a, but for a lot of the year. And he was a player could Maybe really snapper. Captain. Probably. I'm, I'm not hundred oh, yeah. percent sure, but they got some, they got some studs on that team. They got a couple WHL boys that I played against and um, a couple like rookies that I like were on my team in Portland, but never, 
like we're too young to play. Um, I just realized the small world is the spelling there, which, yeah, he would be their captain. I'm pretty sure he's won a bunch. He like led the league in scoring, you know, um, the team Denmark shirt t-shirts. I still wear around 10 years later. He gave them to me. <laughs> oh yeah. I got a couple of those actually too. I, uh, Where it says Denmark, years. like Dan Mark. I'm like, yeah. that's cool. I want to wear that. <laughs> <laughs> Bright red. Too. Yeah. Well, mine's nice gray with, Denmark and red okay. across, yeah. Mine's bright red, probably got thinning it. t-shirts Different too. They too. make me look thin. That's why I wear them a lot. <laughs> Thanks, spells, right? <laughs> um, so uh what else do I got then? After party was my question. So then you went back to the walking street, go to, then you end up in the bar with the fellas and you have a time. And then what's that? That was on a Saturday. So when do you got to play next? That was time? Sunday morning. Obviously, like yeah. we got back at 1 a.m. Like we stayed in the locker room for a bit. Um, yeah, you got to do that. You got to have your time in the locker room. And pizza and stuff. So that was good. And then stopped at the tank on the way home, obviously, and um, got a couple more beers. But uh, yeah, so that's Sunday by the time we rolled in. And then we played, I want to say we played Tuesday. No, really? Yeah, we had a game against the yeah. on Tuesday. And that was the first period was a. Yeah. yeah, you got to get it out of you before you can really start excelling, right? <laughs> yeah, we like we practice Monday, just kind of like sweat it out, like don't want any bone, any groins or anything. Just you know, get through today, and we'll go to work tomorrow. And it, I think we we had some guys that partied pretty hard, so that <laughs> well, you have to eight hours. Yeah, forty eight nope. hours was tough, but we we battled. We had our first period was wasn't great, but our next two were good, so. Came out with the win at the end of the day. And you know what? When it, it's the same as when we won the Challenge Cup in Cardiff, and people always said, like, we blew the league because we lost the next game. It's like, we were going to lose the next game either way. You win a championship, <laughs> you got to floor it. Like, we were playing yeah. the same team we just beat in the finals. They're going to be pissed off and ready to play. And we're going to feel pretty sweet about winning the Challenge Cup. And that's what happened. You know yeah. what? But Anytime I, you get a trophy in the middle of the year, it's going to be a. You got to do it. Position. You got to do it. You got to do it. You, you know, it's it's never going to be the same as that night. It's not like you get to celebrate the Challenge Cup at the end of the year. It's over, <laughs> right? So exactly. you got to do it, folks. Get after it every time. <laughs> Did you follow the Challenge Cup this year? Uh, didn't Belfast win? Yeah, they won again, yeah. They I've did. had a few guys from Belfast on, but they're all retired. Like I don't think I've had any active players on from there. So, you know, I'm not that invested in their squad. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't <laughs> If they're not, if they're not showing up, you know, if they're know. not buying into the shed, then I'm not buying into that. Right? They, I actually just I don't know, have time. Fans are not a big fan of me. So, I, well, that's where like, speaking of how the world's not so big in the shed, right. Is, um, that's where the kid <laughs> gave you the, uh, Twix when you got pulled to one game. <laughs> yeah. That's little, little did that little of that photo show. There was some comments made for sure. Mean ones from that kid. Oh yeah, well maybe the family. It starts with a W, rhymes with anchor. Really? Oh, the whole yeah, the whole. They section. called you a wanker. <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to say that. It's bad. Oh, words. I think you can. <laughs> so when my kid went to school in Cardiff for the first time as a three-year-old, a three-year-old, he goes like as soon as you turn three, you go to school. He went there, and then he comes home and calls his baby sister a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. I like it. Been just kind of following the league and stuff, and like uh, obviously my Twitter's full of like fans yeah. and like. Do you know that when I things. say you're coming on, I get messages from Sheffield fans, from Cardiff fans, from a whole bunch of different teams that like are like, "Oh, what a legend! I can't wait for him to come back <laughs> on." <laughs> That's good. I didn't know I had fans in different uh, area yeah. codes over there, yeah. but yeah, even the orange like you. Yeah. <laughs> I watched. Uh, Something came up on my feed. It was a uh, pet grave on Sheffield, like kind of did the gesture to the fans. And uh, obviously the UK fans lost it on Twitter. And we're I didn't just, see that. This is absurd. I can't believe a pro hockey player is doing this to a fan. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, I know that building pretty well. Like I guarantee you there's about 1400 fans either gesturing him the same thing and or screaming the exact same word at him. Yeah, I think the one guy once he's off the ice is allowed to give it back to you a little bit. 
right um it's like they can antagonize us as much as they want but we're not allowed to do anything back right yeah we don't we don't make enough money not to do anything back <laughs> small world pet has been hit in the head by uh kit cats in manchester oh, yeah. <laughs> after losing that's what happens <laughs> they, he's a pretty tough character too is he well sorry for yeah. hitting you with a chocolate bar you come to the show and talk <laughs> about it if you want do, do you know him i don't know him no i just uh played against him okay <laughs> Yeah, you young bucks all know each other. I don't know. I, I, I don't know your age group, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, um, that Belfast Arena can be hostile. You know, which other one can be is Fife. That one's a bit hostile too. Yeah, Fife, Dundee, Scottish ones are always a bit you can't yeah. understand sometimes what they're saying, but I they're you bit... can see it in your face that they're not happy with you. You're right though, they are probably the hardest to understand, aren't they? The Scottish. <laughs> I do like the accent though, but I do too. I like how they all speak differently, right? Where yeah. like the Welsh, the English, and the it's it's neat. <laughs> I guess the same type of stuff happens around here, right? Yeah, maybe not as not it's as slow. Really. Like or, the yeah. fact that they're maybe a two hour drive away and speaking totally different is crazy to me. And do you not find it interesting that everybody spoke like that and then they got on boats together and then come over here and then start talking like we do over here it's like huh, why didn't they keep talking the way they were <laughs> Jeez, i better not overthink things in the shed today eh? yeah no taxation without representation there <laughs> we're speaking Oof. different now okay anywho what is your drink of choice i say you win a championship are you a beer drinker or are you getting into the hard stuff or what um to be honest the, like the the ones that I, once I'm on the champagne, I just kind right? of stick to it. Um, and then I think the Moscow mules were flowing pretty good. What's at that the piano now? bar here? And we went to the piano bar and yeah, the Moscow mules, ginger beer and vodka. Oh, adding vodka to beer. Yeah, well, ginger beer. So it's like kind of a mixer. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Moscow mule is. Uh, pretty electric here at the piano bar if anyone ever comes to herning denmark go to the piano bar and get yourself a moscow mule piano bars are fun eh is it like yeah. one piano in it or is there are yeah not dueling? dueling not dueling no. but uh you're allowed to sit around the piano and all the boys sit around it and just belt it out probably not the best voices i'm sure people like, aren't big fans of it but we have fun um and that's hockey <laughs> that sounds like hockey <laughs> right <laughs> uh piano bars are fun that's great so what's your favorite restaurant in town um you have a honey hole that you go like, to all go the time to, my favorite go to like a cheap restaurant uh just for like lunch or something is uh gusto that does i my personal opinion does the best uh durham kebab oh yeah i know there it's a mm. a sensitive subject with some guys in town here like they like to go to the other one across town but Gusto, for some reason, Durham kebab. Durham, that is like the one on the I, yeah, 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 that's uh called the Yufka in Germany, right? Yeah, but they do their own wraps there, like they they do the yeah, dough, they do. Fresh, roll, so. roll it out, roll it out yeah. right in front of you, turn you on right, yeah. right on the spot. That yeah. shit can get you hot and bothered when they start rolling out dough and you see the meat rotating on a stick, right? Oh, well, yeah, and they start shaving that shit off. <laughs> But yeah, that's my go-to lunch spot if I'm just kind of lazy and don't want to cook anything back home. But then uh, mm -hmm. the wife and I have been to a few restaurants. There's good, good sushi restaurants here in Denmark, but uh, that's true. DRDR is probably the favorite place, most favorite place I've been. DRDR? DRDR. I don't know if it's BRDR Price it's called. I don't know if that's how you say it in uh, um... Danish, but... That's what I, it says in the sign for me. <laughs> so I, I would say if I'm being honest, um, you know, I think that's what I try to do here in the shed is it when I'm thinking of Haderslav and Voyens, um, the restaurants were not that good. They were really there. Well, they had the hotel one was good where they took me my first meal when I got to town. That was a good one. Um, I don't I don't I the fat like the fast food places, they weren't like the chains, they were kind of like they, I don't know. They were making cheeseburgers and fries and stuff, but it was like, it was okay. It's okay. We got like bones here. Like bones is every all over Denmark. Um, I don't know it's what like that rib, is. Rib joint. Um, they're a sponsor team, so I should probably chuck their name in here. Yeah, but. yeah. 
Uh, and it sounds uh, like the ribs are fantastic of sponsor yeah. the team. No, right? they're they're excellent. They're, they're how excellent. much is it? How much is it to sponsor your jersey next season? I think you gotta I find think that out. Sponsor the squad, so I don't know. What? So maybe I'm gonna get my own. Maybe I can use the shed to boost my own jersey. I think we should get some kind of a raffle going to raise money to sponsor your jersey. Yeah. Whoever wants to sponsor my jersey, send me a message and we'll we'll talk. I want to. <laughs> Minimum 20 grand. Oh, I don't have that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh my raffle. Actually, I have a raffle going on right now. Is uh I got a jersey donated to me. From Chet guy Mark Maloney, who um, the, he was head like head of Naya Securities with his son, um, and they were sponsor of the shed. We got them back in as the security guards there, yeah, at the Cardiff Arena, and um, also helped out their son Maxon with the raffle and helped him decorate his room right when he was battling cancer. So they've donated a jersey to raffle off, which was a Scott Matska from the Matska night in Cardiff, and we're gonna raffle that off at aleshockeytails.com, folks. And half the money's going to go to ALS um, for Matska, um, who I never had the pleasure to meet, but I wish I would have been able to have him in the shed and chat with him. Uh, but uh, the other half's going to go to Rich's Road to Recovery. Um, it's Rich Bateman from Sheffield who had a massive stroke and his family needs some support financially to get through everything. And uh, they got a lot cooking. And the reason that hit home was I had his son on when he reached out. And we did a raffle back then, but they need help still. They still have the battle ahead of them. And the reason I know about that is because my grandpa had one. And then my grandma had to keep the boat floating there for a few decades. And um, I know what it can be like after a massive stroke. So I want to help them. So please buy tickets at aleshockeytails.com, right? Some good causes there. Right? Yeah, I agree. Um, That's why... Even if you don't want the jersey, folks, just buy the tickets just to help out, right? Chad family, right? People helping people. Yeah, I mean, it's a Kenton Smith jersey. Haven't met him, but I know his brother. Shared a hotel room with him, playoff weekend. Ran amok, wasn't even a player anymore, just a pregame speaker. Mark, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, he was my roommate at the playoff weekend at Nottingham, his brother. So that's his jersey. Small world, folks, when you get talking around the shed, right? There you go. <laughs> okay. What do you want to talk about? Let's see here. So playoffs, all best of sevens. All best of sevens. I like that. Like that's hockey. Nothing against the UK or anything, but I think they're yeah. missing out on some that's game sevens and playoff hockey and seeing yeah. teams back to back to back to back. Yeah. And but, like uh, like yeah. I like I know how competitive you are, and I uh, feel like we're quite similar that way. Um, and that like going in a best of seven against another team, and like trying to figure out even if you lose the first game or two, trying to figure out why and how to beat them, and then you go seven games and or not. There's times in best of sevens you can feel the other team break, and you know you have them, and then like the and it can be so hard for the whole seven games, or you can feel a team break or you can feel your team break. And you're like, come on. Right. It's um, anything can happen in playoffs. Like one eight could beat one. Obviously it's not supposed to happen, but goalie gets hot forwards, get hot. You know, if someone gets hurt. Anything can happen. And I, the best I, of sevens, it makes it a little less likely that anything can happen. Like it, when it's oh, a one game sure. playoff. Yeah, yeah. But a goalie can get real hot for a, you know, an average team and all of a sudden you're, you're beating giants or whatever. Right. So goalies win championships. That's what, <laughs> how it works. I thought that was defense. Well, that's the goaltending. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, the defense around the goalie helps the goalie be the goalie, but uh, the goalie wins the championships. The defense helps. <laughs> well, we'll hope, we'll hope everyone chips in here next couple months. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah really enjoy the whole coaching thing and teaching D zone to kids now. Cause like how I learned it and stuff. I, yeah, I really like this whole coaching thing, you know? Good. Yeah. The I'll gals, really I, I got, I got a game later tonight. We're going to run a muck. We're going to dominate those little bee stings from down the road, you know? <laughs> just getting angry already. I like it. Ah, a bit competitive, but no, we just had our first uh, tournament weekend and had a hoot. Uh, yeah. I saw the belly flops going. 
Yeah. Yeah. Dominated it. Um, did my best, you know, put my best foot forward. I felt like I really committed to each belly flop. Uh, the first night I did one for them. So they had to work hard the next day, but then, uh, the next day we're at, uh, our games and they're like, coach, you have to do another belly flop tonight. Like you have to, we're going swimming after this game and you got to do a belly flop. And I'm like, well, I already did one. And they're like, no, we're doing it with you. We're all going to, I'm like, well, if you all want to do it at the same time, I'm in. And then we had like 13 girls light up and me and we all belly flopped together. <laughs> it was hockey, go. right? That's hockey. Mm-hmm. Bringing teams together, Wally. I try to. Yeah, <laughs> I try to. <laughs> um, yep. Anywho, um, where are we at now? Um, so who are you playing again? Uh, Frederick Shaw. Frederick Shaw. Who, who do they got? I don't. I haven't looked. Research team hasn't got hot. They got anybody good? I'm not sure, honestly. Um, you don't even know, playing... eh? So I've played with goalies that like the guy I played with in Denmark, Alfie Misho, won a whole bunch of times. Uh, but he had like notepads of stuff about each team and like where guys stood. And I'm not that type of guy. I'm like, let's go out and play. Like <laughs> I know what they do. I don't need to write it down, you know. Yeah, I don't know, like, specific players, probably, like, their names and stuff, but, uh, like, I'll, I'll know, like, power play, like, what guy has a one-timer or where he normally shoots or whatever, I'll, I'll know that kind of thing, but it's such a fast game, like, even if you read, like, oh, this guy shoots here, you know, 80% of the time, like, chance chances <laughs> he's on a breakaway and some That's guy slashes him or something and he still goes that same spot, it's probably not going to happen, so... Yeah. Just read and react is probably the best way to do it, especially with how skilled guys are now, right? They switch it up quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know what the game's like now. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> uh, but I totally agree. I know there's it's like same as like going in for a forward, going in on a shootout and like already deciding what you're gonna do, what move you're gonna do. It's like if the times I scored on a shootout were the times I went in clear minded and was checking out what was going on. And then I was like, okay, he's giving me this. I'm going to do that. Or when I went in already deciding I'm going to do this and like, what, you know, then, then that's taken away. All of a sudden you're like, what do I do now? And then you suck. <laughs> yeah. I think the best guys I've played with, uh, Jan Osari in Hungary, he's still there. I think he signed like a nine year contract or something crazy like that. Oh. But, uh, he had this, he had a move where he came in on the same entry and made a move probably top of the hash marks and had two separate moves. One would go one way and one go the other way. One would end up on his back end and they would both go top shelf net every time. So it was tough to know which exact one he was doing, but he's probably the best judo guy I've seen. It is a craft, eh? When the guys have, yeah, you're right. Yeah. The guys that have that move that they can go either way. Mm. I still think shootouts are stupid. What do you think? Do you like him as a goalie? I, I thought, apparently, it was for the fans. Is why we brought it back. So I don't know. Well, they've been around long enough, and I think everybody's pretty bored of them. I think we should go back to overtime. Yeah, I think three on three. If they extended it, would be pretty sweet. Right, just play till someone scores. Someone's going to score in three and three, folks. That could take that long. The NHL men are back and forth, like crazy huge glove save, and then they'll play it. And so much more them. exciting than a, a shootout that's like a skills competition. Like yeah. it's not an all stars game. Like it's three on O's, two on O's, and like mm-hmm. exciting, right? I think, I think Patrick Kane, when it first came out, probably excited a lot of people with coming in slow and more of a skills competition. Well, I think it was just better than five on five overtime for five minutes and then ending <laughs> in a tie, which is what it was, right? Like, yeah. I'm still least... waiting for the first NHL guy to like pick it up on his stick and lacrosse it. Right. And like, obviously yeah. they do it from behind the net, but like on a breakaway or like a shootout move. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting because back when I played, if anybody even thought to do anything like that, like you were fired, you'd be kicked out. You'd be shamed out of the sport for Rob, Robbie, Shrimp. Yeah, Robbie, Robbie Shrimp. Shrimp was the one that started changing the game and now yeah. now it's like cool to do it and now all the kids are trying to do it and then like Zegris is in the NHL doing that stuff and you're like man the old guys on my team if I tried to do something like that they would run me through the boards I wouldn't even need the other team to hit me <laughs> like I can't imagine if Shrimpy was born like 20 years later same skill and obviously like hockey IQ and stuff he'd be he'd be yeah. crazy yeah because the, the yeah he's was the pioneer of all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing him do it like 
live like we're on a rush come up and just pick it up and throw it at the net you're like what <laughs> yeah he did it did it to me against red bull he like went five hole on me and thank god i went down but it was great they came over the blue line some guy was driving the net he picked it up lacrosse style and whipped it on net <laughs> that's not a shock you <laughs> i was like oh god if this thing bounces and goes in i'm gonna be on all the highlight reels everywhere well, so if anybody's listening to me in the shed, not that I know what I'm talking about, but uh, we should probably stop at the shootouts now. Uh, <laughs> just, just in case you're wondering what hockey guys think, that's what we think. Okay, Gary, Gary Bettman's a, a listener and have it. <laughs> well, maybe the Metal League in is right. <laughs> there you go, maybe Metal League. Is. Maybe I don't know. Um, I wonder how. Like we've been right reg- now. Speaking of that, you get Twix throwing the ice over there, and I had not really had anybody from Denmark on um, other than you and Kevin Tansy shed guy right on your team D man. But yeah. um, we ranked number one in Denmark a couple times. Like, do you think uh, people talk when the Twix hit the ice? Like, what is this about? <laughs> I think I, I've gotten a few messages. Um, I've seen some few, like a few messages on the Facebook feed or whatever, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it might be, but it's always the comments are always usually from like a Cardiff fan or from a hungry fan saying like, go look at this podcast. Like that's cool. That's my marketing team folks. That's how it works. People helping (laughs) people. I don't need a marketing team when people help me out. Right. (laughs) So thank you. Keep talking about it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, yeah, he's on a podcast. It explains everything. And so maybe this is pretty. Yeah. Tune in folks. Uh, number one in Denmark is pretty cool. Right. Um, it's been pretty neat actually. And um, you know what? This all started with you um, getting it out there and it, it takes people winning stuff. It's like when I had on the captain of the Manchester storm and the first time we talked about um, having a chocolate storm, they were playing Sheffield the next night. And um, I bet you most people weren't betting on Manchester. Well, haha, <laughs> shed boost, right? Critch goes out there, mucks it up. They get in a bunch of brawls win the game. And then all of a sudden a thing started because they won. If they don't win that night, um, then things may be totally different in Manchester now, but like they just went on a five game heater. There's chocolate all over the place and winning is it's the only way the fun stuff happens, right? You do got to win. That is the key. Right. And you did win after the time I had you on to start all this, right? And we have had raffles together too, right? Yeah, we've had, yeah, at least one. I've been I think, a part of maybe two, but yeah, at least. Yeah. Um, Teddy Ball game and uh Teddy Ball game. Yeah, I just talked to him the other day. How's Looking how are good. they doing? Good? He's good, yeah. Um, loves hockey, which is unfortunate. He probably won't be able to play as he gets older, but uh loves hockey, goes out with grandpa all the time and skates around or gets gets skated around. Yeah. Um how old yeah, would he be? Every now? every goalie every goalie is Mac, so that's good. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. So Mac goalie, Mac goalie, and then my wife's name, my wife's Kiki. Kiki, so. nice. Um, no, it's uh, it was it's cool that like starting this and chatting to people. Like I met, I didn't wouldn't even know who who I wouldn't know you unless we started this. And like then I feel like I know your nephew and like we've raised money together. And like now to think I can raise money for Rich and his family and ALS just because I talk to people in my shed, it's like, huh, that's cool. <laughs> right. It's good karma, man. Certain good karma. You need good karma, right? Good you. karma. Huge. Good karma. Um, so you have also the leading scorer in the league on your team, Phil Marinaccio. Phil Marinaccio, yeah. Mm. Uh, 50 points in 41 games, eh? Yeah. Something yeah, like he's that? got a little bit of an injury bug for a couple games there, but... Uh... Gonna, I was going to say that's almost Wally pace. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, I actually uh... don't know. I don't remember what I scored in Denmark. I think we played 40 games. I don't know, though. I, th- I think we, Yeah, I think it's 46 here. Really? 48, 48. I think I had 56 and 40 if my math, if my brain's working right. Research team hasn't got hot on me in a while. <laughs> I took a couple months off or what? We only played 40 games that year. All right. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. Yeah, but he's uh he's got a, a good touch in, around the net. Things just seem to go posted in for him. So is he a little fella? It's not big. Um I'd say 
under under six foot, maybe six foot. You guys look like you got a deep team, though. Eh? It looked like there was a lot of players with like thirty ish points. Yeah, we're yeah, we got some depth for sure. Like our top, even yeah, our fourth line's got some scoring on it too. So I, I don't even. Yeah, I don't know. they probably deep, third, that's third, a third, third being deep wins team. championships. You need everybody to be able to help, right? Yeah, we should be pretty much healthy by game one here. So, so everyone back. Sure would be cool at the end of this uh, to do a pod with both of our gold helmets, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, uh, the gold helmet would be a lot of fun. If we oh. play the way we know how to play, it's, it's uh should happen. There it is. <laughs> Mine's in the background still, oh, right? I saw, I saw it already halfway through. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Don't, no, don't worry. They actually asked me to kind of leave after that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Can't be celebrating as hard as you, I guess. Eh? I, I, I actually was a good boy. I like Colby was little then. I didn't even get that carried away that time. It wasn't even close to as bad. Maybe as that's the issue. They need to see you guys going nuts. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't Wally enough that year. Eh? I don't know. <laughs> oh. um, no, carp's optional at the bar. But yeah, no, you you should get. You guys should definitely do it. Um, because um, it is fun. You get to keep it forever, and um. And it can keep you safe um, on nights out or doing That's fun true. things, right? Yeah, I'm going to strap mine down tight so no one takes it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, you should definitely go get that. And I think you will. Uh, looks like you got the squad to do it. So uh, what are the best barns and atmospheres in the league this year in Denmark, do you think? Obviously, herning for us is good. Um, like we pack out at like 2-2 or something like that, like 2,200. Um but uh, it's obviously like a lower ceiling building, so the atmosphere gets going. Um, and then Allberg obviously is like one of the bigger buildings, so they they get going pretty good. Even I've been there, yeah. and like they don't get too many fans, but the fans that are there are loud, like the drums. And they, I, I watched them hang banners for probably thirty minutes before the game. Like I was doing my warm up and stuff. They're they're into it. The fans that are there, they're into it. So. The uh the Danish fans are a passionate bunch. So. Yeah, no, it's uh, I enjoyed my time in Denmark. I really liked it. What have you been doing for fun then on days off? Um, been playing vids with Mosey again. He's finally back on. Is he? Um, yeah, dog's potty trade now. Yeah, it took him yeah. took him six seven months to get on, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Dana's got him. Mm. Dana's got him all flustered. So love is love, right? Yeah. Love is love. They're trying to figure out how to get their dog back and forth from the U.S. to the U.K., which luckily my my wife is a is a absolute star at. So she sent them the the ins and outs of how to do it. So hopefully they figure it out. Um. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah. When I brought my dog over to Denmark, that was the time it got he that yeah they, he got lost on the way. Uh, it wasn't a good day. Um. He. Oh. Missed the connecting flight in Frankfurt to uh, Hamburg, and uh, we arrive, and our dog wasn't there. And you know what? That was a pretty stressful time. Yeah, pretty... I can imagine it was stressful. Yeah, it was stressful. Um, very stressful. He, he can't be. He can't be stopping at bars though, and and mixing it up. You know, he's just got to go right. You got to get right to the next gate, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get there, bud. Don't even take it's a your dog. I'm guessing he's stopping at a few bars. <laughs> but well, he did like beer actually. The German fellows <laughs> would really feed him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, it was he came on the next flight. It was about an hour and a half later, but um that's not too bad, but still that's an hour and a half. Well, until they until they located him and figured out where he was, uh who <laughs> you know. You can only imagine. Yeah, it wasn't we're really lucky enough Bella comes on the flight with us up top, so uh, yeah, you I, you mentioned that before, right? Because it's like a support dog, right? Psychiatric. So that so happens when you're a goalie for so long. Goalies are weird, right? <laughs> you need that support on the plane to get over there. Uh, yeah, good I, good idea, awesome. though. She just cuddle up right at your feet. And My no dog was pretty big to be up there. there. Yeah. yeah, she's been good. Uh, that's cool. Um, So you got uh, into the hot dog game over there yet? Um, I actually did have a, like a, like a bratwurst, um, the other day on the walking street. And then the lady that was making them, it was like in a, 
little shack or whatever the lady was making them gave my dog like a massive one like oh. it was cold but oh yeah whatever um, so she mucked the whole thing full thing just crushed it yeah well you ever in germany get into the half meter sausages the ones that are like shoved down the tube um well i think yeah they, they, it was called a ha- halb meter right half meter sausage and they were long and i would i'd crush that whole half meter sometimes i'd even want to get into a second one you know <laughs> try to see big, if i could do a full uh, meter <laughs> i'm not a big hot dog guy unless it's like summer and barbecue like camping and stuff but what about christmas markets or you're in whitewater do they even have christmas markets in vice foster germany yeah like we're only yeah i guess no, not in Vice Foster. They didn't have Christmas markets, but like Dresden had them. That's only 45 minutes. So Dresden's a nice city, isn't it? Dresden's super fun city. Yeah. Yeah. I went to visit Shed Guy Hammer when he played there. Great time. Yeah. It's a good, good city. A little it is spread a good city. out for like nights out, but it's a fun city. Yeah. You're right. Um, so you still uh, have you shot yourself this season in the net? No. Honestly, I was thinking about it actually before we jumped on. There's there's been some close calls for sure. But... Is that right? You're still balancing up between. Is it Lucas Aids over there? Are you doing Gatorades, Powerade? What do you get? Oh, into? we got Bio Steel still, but uh, Bio Steel and Salt. Bio Steel is getting a bit expensive out here, though. I might have to call them and see if we can work something figure out. out a, figure out a deal, but uh, you would think you'd be sponsored by Twix by now, at least. You would think. I don't know. I got to get the got to get Mrs. Mars on the phone here. We need See, to, we need to, out. we need to get someone that knows how to work social media. We'll get you sponsored <laughs> by Twix and we'll get, we'll get the shed bigger, right? Yeah. I know. We just need I to figure this team, stuff out. <laughs> the team contacted like Mars, Denmark, like Twix, Denmark, and they were not interested apparently. So jeepers. That's, that's sad. Yeah. They got why, like, why wouldn't Twix they be? Your why wouldn't have they be? Fun. Have, have some fun. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Throw some money at some fun things. Right? Like you've been making enough for years, you know? Yeah. Think about how many Twix that we've, that have been sold from you winning. I've games. been thinking about that. Probably. No, seriously. Think about that. Minimum, like, minimum 50 a game plus the thousand Twix game or thousand, 1400 Twix game. And now we're taking them on the road. Now we're taking them on the road. I'd say on average. But think about Cardiff. Think about in Cardiff. In think about in Hungary. How many Twix have been bought for you winning hockey games? It has to be. I, I can't even imagine. Like, think about how many were hitting the ice in Cardiff. The sale, the sales of Twix have got to be somewhere in the tens of thousands, I would assume. Right. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm I've not disagreeing. Pop. I, I feel like uh, the chocolate being sold in manchester at a higher rate than it used to be too <laughs> yeah just get involved these, folks, find these stocks right? like what stocks these are but well you're gonna keep winning games over there they're gonna keep selling twix I, we should have another thousand gamer but you know folks if anybody's listening to denmark i think the night that they get the gold helmets there should be so many gosh darn twixes it's just outrageous right i mean that would be unbelievable we if by some by the grace of God, if we win it at home, the whole thing, if we make it there, obviously, first, we got to win tomorrow first. But yeah, if we can just litter the ice with Twix in a championship, that'd be pretty crazy. That would be pretty crazy, folks, if anybody's listening to us, right? Um, you know, it's weird for me, bringing back memories, talking to you about getting ready for the playoffs in Denmark is uh, uh, after they didn't ask me back, like I was so sour and like, uh, that's, that's just when we had a little guy and then a bun in the oven and they legit say like you're not coming back we don't want you back we're not offering you anything it's we win the championship and i was second in the league and i think i had the best plus minus in the league and they just asked me to kindly leave and then it just goes out there right on the elite prospects to sooner you to unknown and then that doesn't look good for a guy like me and uh anyways i was so sour about the whole thing I didn't watch any videos or look at pictures really of us winning. I was so sour about the whole thing. I guess I'm finally over it. Cause I, d- I have YouTube like that championship and seen the videos and stuff and seeing my son and myself out there winning a championship with the whole team. Um, I'm glad I'm finally over it. I can watch it now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> guess I'm not 
too competitive. I could watch it now, right? It was That's like, what's nice about winning, Ch- like just like the photos and memories are always so good, and there's like it's obviously just pure joy in everyone's face. Like no one's really worried about the photos or anything. So it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to like think like, oh, I need to jump in there with this guy and get a photo so I can look back on him. But but you need the it's the memories, man, and uh, yeah. I. It's weird for me because there's a lot of memories and pictures I had never seen until I started doing this and talking to people. And then I actually didn't realize how much I had won until I started doing this. <laughs> I had actually kind of forgot about everything. And, I was, and then when you, see, you kind of start putting it together, you're like, huh, I guess, yeah, I guess I did win everywhere I went. <laughs> you, just remember, you just remember the good times. Uh, well, you get pretty sad. And that's what's interesting for me is like, everybody's relationships with different teams is how it ends. Right. It's not. a, And then when you're on the team, you're all in, but like everybody leaves teams for different reasons or different things. And for me, it left very sour taste in my mouth for pretty well. Every team, except my last one Cardiff, because I blew out my knee. Um, Landsuit wasn't bad. Cause they just didn't have the money to pay us like not even close. And then the other teams is like, well, you didn't want me back. So like, I hate you. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a business at the end of the day. If you can, if you can depart a team and be on somewhat talking terms. It's, I think it's pretty rare. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause um, if you leave and your career still going, unless you're going up and every up to something else, every it's a uh, bloodbath out there at pro hockey. Sometimes, you know, Anyways, maybe I shouldn't be so competitive. I hear guys that just don't get asked back, and they're like, oh, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, well, screw maybe you. Maybe I'm not getting asked back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so you have only let Thor play two games this year, eh? I think he played his third last uh, the other night in okay. Hurley. Sorry, they didn't game. update that for the research team. <laughs> no, no, no. We, so uh, they gave you a night off before playoffs? That's nice of them. Yeah, I think – I don't know. We were we were watching all the games there on TV, and I'd say probably half the league was sitting. Most guys, um, yeah. The only team that could have changed was Allberg, and they dressed their full lineup. So, right. um, and they ended up losing anyways. But um, yeah, I think everyone's just gearing up for playoffs. They're everyone's spots kind of solidified. So, making sure no one gets hurt. Well, Danish playoffs are fun. I remember. Uh being in that man and it was it was a blast the first game of our playoffs was like a triple o tier and uh, that was a good way to kick her off it was fun we we won in overtime and then well, they're always good ones to win yeah it, um but i i remember going it we went to game seven against herning and i remember yeah. that that last series man and it's memories you never forget um and you know winning is the opposite of losing and uh yeah you guys may as well do it right might as well. Yeah. You can, but you know what? You got to win the first one. So you do. Um, off season plans. Got anything cooking? You going on any trips? What are you doing? Uh, no real trips planned. Um, besides, I, I, I would like to get out there for Batchy's thing, like we talked about. Um, you if should. it works out, you know, with flights and stuff like that, if it makes sense. And then uh, to see Gemma, obviously, as well. Um, I'm sure we'll end up doing that, just whether it lines up with Batchy's. Uh, a testimony or not will still be seen, but, um, and then just probably back home and back and forth between Canada and Jackson hall. So. Yeah. Um, so you're going back, you're going to run any like clinics and do some coaching and stuff. Yeah. I got, uh, my little crew Academy week long camp there, um, July 17th. Um, so we got that running from like, I'll be on the ice for six hours from like nine to four or whatever it is with Zamboni ice. So that's a, it's a bit of a grind for me, but uh, yeah, the that, kids have fun and we, we got good feedback last year. So well, kids, this, helping kids have fun playing hockey is never, never a job really, but it is nice to get a little kickback and take the skates off time. after six hours or so. Oh, I can last, I, I did a couple three hours sessions there and, three hours man i was hurt big time it's a grind and then for me like i gotta work out either in the morning or afterwards to like stay on my schedule obviously but it's uh at the end of that friday workout is just miserable your feet hurt everything hurts but 
Yeah. Feel good when you get it done. Have a couple of beers with your staff and feel good. Um, so how the Jackson Hole Moose I see are running amok again, eh? Oh yeah. Whether they lost two games or something. Yeah, maybe four actually. My my dad wasn't happy calling him and checking in, see how everything's going. And they lost a few games and he was just livid. Like like that. Like you're a lot of bit of, of, bit of a competitor, is he? <laughs> yeah. You're a lot, like one, you're not even the coach or anything anymore. You're the GM slash owner. So relax. <laughs> and uh <laughs> but no, he GM yeah, slash he, owner, eh? So he likes to he likes to act like he's, you know, stepping away from it and, you know, let the guys do their thing. But as soon as that competitive edge comes out of him, he likes to make sure, make sure they win type of thing. So. But it's no, they're uh, a lot of GM team. owners are like that. Eh? It's I, I remember in pro you lose a couple games in a row. All of a sudden the guy you never see comes in to give some speech about how much you need to be better and, blah 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 and it's like i've heard this speech every time we lost two or three games okay <laughs> yeah my buddy uh aj sanders there he uh it's like the most points in moose history this year so i think it was like this times. season yeah yeah he got it this season but it's over the course of his moose career i think it's 600 points or goals or something Jeepers. i don't know crazy amount obviously they're winning 10 to 7 or something like that but yeah so the yeah there's a lot of goals in those games i see sometimes eh? Yeah, fourteen three years. <laughs> you know, I had I actually saw a couple of good dust ups too. There's a couple of really good yeah, scraps. Good scraps. That. Um, yeah. They got Robbie Leslie is uh, running the social media now, so it's a bit more like it gives it gives off a little bit of a professional vibe. They'll post like you know photos that people take and whatnot, but uh, it's way better than what the shed does. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, professional. Robbie got his first goalie fight this year too. So good, Bro. good little. Uh, Good little social media goalie slash, you know, entertainer. You haven't got in any goal. You haven't gotten any fights recently, eh? You've been pretty tame in Denmark. What are you just winning? Yeah, just stopping tame. pucks. Everyone's been, everyone's been pretty nice to me. I think. Isn't it? I find I found it interesting in Denmark. I found it. It was the cleanest hockey I've ever played in my life. Nobody did anything dirty out there. Everybody was just playing hockey the way it was like, trying not to take penalties. Yeah, we uh, might be might have changed. There's some. We got some. We got some big boys on our team that like to take some runs at people. So maybe, maybe it's just us. I don't know. <laughs> now there was one guy I remember in the league that he would, he, you had to know when he was on the ice, this Mike Douglas, he would, I doubt he'd be around, but he was a fella that like, you could, you could skate up to the red and dump it in. And like, if you didn't know, he he was coming like three seconds late and he was going <laughs> to fill you in. You had to know. <laughs> yeah. He was coming late. I don't I like think that. If they like, I think I don't know if the Dell or the Dell Two has this where you're only allowed four fights a year or something like that. If they could find a way to bring that into this league, I think it would tame the dirty hits down a bit. But I why? What, what's the rules with fighting? Can they can't fight at all? I think you get kicked out for the next game. Like you get a misconduct for that game and the following game. Really, for one fight? For one fight, yeah. I believe like if you take your blood, I actually don't recall seeing a fight in Denmark. Now that I think yeah, of this. I've, never, I've, I've heard a couple of times this year, like, Oh, this guy lost his school and fought somebody. And then now he's out for the game or something like that, but mm-hmm. I've never seen it. So. They sure don't like imports fighting in Europe. I know that. No, it's frowned upon, you know, but yeah. I, I in Germany you uh, get to fight four times. I, I was thinking if you fought in Germany, you might miss the next game too, but maybe it was only in the third period. Yeah, I think with like five minutes left or something like that. I do know I wasn't supposed to fight. They didn't want me to do that. <laughs> but I wasn't very good at it either. I knew that too. <laughs> not, you're not Mark Lewis? Uh no, I'm the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I saw he had a couple of dust ups like two nights in a row or something like that. Why would someone fight him? I don't get how that's a good idea. He's a big boy. Right? And he moves fast and he's athletic and like Yeah. I don't I've never seen a guy get hit more times in the face before he can even like put his hands up. I mean, like one of the fight I saw, like ice level, it was just like boom 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 boom. And it was done. <laughs> well, and then like there was that punch in was it Hungary, wasn't it? Slovakia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Slovakia, that punch was um scary. Like 
jeepers i and like that guy didn't know what he was messing around with that guy was skating towards him and it's like yeah. well that's a bad idea i wouldn't be coming towards him like that yeah these european know. kids like i think yeah they, they, they don't Canadian get it boys have been doing it forever and then <laughs> they skate with their hands down like this here here here's my chin <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you should know what you're getting into i bet you that guy learned a good lesson that day right you bet you won't I'll do never, it again probably never do that again probably not it's <laughs> just thinking out loud in the shed um you know what was interesting is when i looked at uh the research team got hot and looked at goalie stats a couple goalies that are up there ish in the league with you george Sorensen, the littlest goalie in the league do you know who that is he's on a team he's and the, a- the other guy is thomas lily pads he was my backup in sunder yuski <laughs> he was like 17 back then now he must be like a full grown-up What's he, is he on Sarnies? No, they were, no. I don't know. I looked it up, but I stopped. But the, yeah, they had good stats, those two. That's George cool. was on Herning when I played there. They had two good goalies, but Georgie was a really young kid, and he didn't play as much as the other guy. But then Lily Pads was our backup. But they're still in the league, and they looked like they were playing a lot. Small world. And there's some good goalies in this league. And like I saw some backups play the other night, and backups like, Studly too, so yeah, there's some players out of Denmark. How, um, also, you played against Cam Brown, shed guy. I think he's in Espia or Esberg, however you want to call it. Esberg, yeah, there's yeah. two, there's two Browns on that team. And he'd be the small, little, fast left hander, yeah. And then there's a, I want to say right handed defenseman, but it could be lefty too. I don't know, but mm, wouldn't be that guy um yeah yeah i don't know people in hockey anymore you know i just like i just know shed guys <laughs> that's a, like the thing is i could probably tell you like if you told me what goalie played where i'd be like oh yeah I, he wears these pads or has this style or whatever <laughs> but if i if i don't know what team they're on it's tough yeah. to say yeah you're right you'd have to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> um well you got any questions for me before we shut her down i'm trying to think what else i got i haven't even looked at your poster picks yet we kind of talked about winning but i really enjoyed the team pick that you were drinking your champagne already in the team pick big bottle yeah so oh well, i wasn't wearing a jersey which is- that that was another question of mine is it's not <clears throat> as good for the pictures that you're not wearing a jersey so why weren't you yeah it was like uh, the staff from the league, I assume, or maybe they're from Alberg. I have no idea. Maybe that's why they came up to me during the celebration early. I, I don't know. But they came up to me and were like, hey, we need your jersey. I was like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, we need your jersey. Some kid won it in an auction. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, for a kid, obviously, whatever. I'll go do whatever. And then skate to the red line. They can't find a marker. And they want some signs. So, like, I'm sitting there. Like, seems like forever. It's probably 20 to 30 seconds and I look back at the boys and they're all lined up with the poster in front and the get ready for the picture and taking the photo and, and you're like, not even in it luckily like a couple of guys are like where's Mac and like everyone's waving me over so I'm like hey I'll be right back like I gave him the jersey I'll be right back slid in there took the photo grabbed a couple of drinks came back signed the signed the jersey but you would think they'd let you take the team photo with your jersey on yeah especially because the like for me, like our locker room is right by the exit. So you could just give it to the lo- them. Have the staff come in the locker room. Hey, we need your jersey. Have everyone, have the people that yeah. got won the jersey meet us outside the locker room and probably yeah. a little more intimate for them too. Right. So, and then, yeah. And then you could be celebrating with the boys and do that first. Um, yeah. So, folks, this is Selfishly just, it, this is back. only if people are listening in the shed, just listen to how we think it should work. We're not telling you what to do, uh, but this is, usually what hockey guys think makes sense um so you would keep your jersey on and take the photos on the ice with all your teammates and your buddies and that's some of your other poster picks but um then you would come off and then you'd give the jersey away it's not like we're gonna lose it we're on the ice right it's it's on me right so we're lost jerseys apparently well that's it <laughs> like uh the last testimonial i was at some hendo threw his gloves in the air naturally because we did win the championship and we were champions again. Um, but somebody did take Hendo's gloves. Uh, like they took them and then he had to like message on Twitter and find them and tweet about it. And then all of a sudden someone did return them. I don't know the story, but yeah, I guess 
It we're gonna turn the lights off for ten minutes, and if the gloves are back, <laughs> yeah, won't ask any questions. Won't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Hendo won't have to sick me after you, right? Exactly. <laughs> like I have to always protect him. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah things can go missing when you win um it's like geez the medals and stuff i won in deutschland they didn't make it back on ski oh, <laughs> we got like a, a little plaque or something which is kind of cool uh, well yeah it sure is fun okay so then let's see the other poster pick was when your captain i guess it was but it was polson's your captain yeah so he's skating towards all the fellows and you guys got the champagne, the confetti, everything's going. And it's just like, this is, it's a magical moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the thought did cross my mind. I don't want to be in the middle of this because then my pads will smell for the rest of the year and be sticky and gross and whatever. Mm, so I stayed on that, the outside. Eh? Yeah. I stayed on the outside of bed. I did get soaked, but was able to clean it up. Um, but yeah, some one of the boys was had the big bottle and was going around the outside spraying everybody, thinking that he was he was wiser than everybody and staying dry. So I just got right in his face with my bottle and showered him. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's your poster pick where there's two players. I could tell one was number eleven, and then there was another dude. Uh, who were they? Huh? Uh, Marinaccio and uh, Perlini. Right. They're, not, I wouldn't call them roommates, but one lives up there and then one lives up up there. So, right. So that's pretty much. And you do spend more time with the guys right there usually, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we the other to... one would be Thor and the other goalie. Thor and Valdemir. Valdemir. Um. Well, small world is I used to dress myself up as Thor, right in Cardiff. Um, yeah, he's got Thor in his helmet now, dude, so. That's cool. Um, I beat the wheels off a of Deese with the Thor hammer once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I really enjoyed that poster pick, especially the Twix right in front of the trophy, right? Oh, yeah. I think I was, they had a couple pictures of fans through them. I started eating before I even got off the ice. So obviously the, the camera could be like that one, but. It's fun is fun, right? <laughs> fun is fun. Winning is fun. Um, I uh, honestly, I, I, keep having you on because i first time i met you i don't it's not it's not like i know what i'm talking about with hockey it's not like i know much about it but um i told people after i met you i'm like that guy that guy's a gamer that guy is the type of goalie i'd want on my team that guy wins stuff because he's so competitive and like when things aren't right and guys aren't giving her he's gonna let them know and um i did mention that and um now to see you do it in cardiff win the playoffs um win or have the best save percentage second all-star team and then you go to Denmark and you start winning there um it just might remind me of myself that like um I went to different places but like um some people maybe took it like maybe I I'm not a good team or I don't have the body type and I kind of took it that way because I had to switch teams But then for some reason, like I kept winning. Right. And it's like, well, screw you. Right. Because I I won and um, maybe I didn't have the body for hockey. I almost got shamed out of the sport. Right. But um, sooner you asked me to leave beating him, asked me to leave. And then like I did go other places and win. So, (laughs) ha ha. (laughs) Right. No, I've definitely, definitely learned some things over the years and uh, maybe calmed down in my old age, but uh, the competitive edge is definitely still there sometimes it's hard to hard to contain but uh <laughs> it's definitely still there I'm, but, but I've you learned, need that learned stuff but at the end of the day i do i do care about my teammates and <laughs> and winning is like you said is fun it is uh but like and your big reason why like i think so many people listen now and so many people are into it and like i say i'm having you on the sheffield fans are into it the Cardiff fans are into it the Danish fans are into it. It's like, well, that's cool, but that's because of who you are and you're entertaining. You win, you're competitive. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I, I like chat with you too. (laughs) (laughs) No, I always have a good time on here too. It's been always nothing negative usually. So that's, uh, it's always fun to come on and be positive and talk about hockey and raise money for stuff. And right. And a good karma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, 
quick shed boost before playoffs, right? Yeah, quick shed boost for playoffs never hurt. It's always right? good. <laughs> always feel good going into playoffs, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I mentioned the boys yesterday on uh, we have like a group Snapchat or whatever and send a picture of my facial. I'm like, are we shaving or are we just letting her letting her run and got a few few guys that can't grow anything, a couple close ups of some shin hairs on some young guys and no, we're letting it go. So so you're starting out be, the playoffs with that beard. This is, this is where we're starting. So wow, that she because she, she hopefully she's going to be full, right? And my my wife's not the happiest of campers with it because it doesn't grow this way; it grows right. this way. So I'm, I'm going to look homeless pretty quickly here. Everybody has a different situation that way. For me in the playoffs, I couldn't get connectors from the mustache to the beard. They would start heading down towards the beard and then turn upwards. Um, <laughs> so the mustache would never connect with the beard and i would just have a mustache and a beard and i'd try and like pull them down but they just wouldn't stay they just kept going up right i don't know what it was your shed your shed buddy tansy's probably got one of the better groomed beards i've seen he takes you know. care of it eh he takes care of it yeah i've seen you him. one of those guys putting that oil in it and all that i wouldn't put it past him yeah he's got the he's got the red he's got the red beard that's Pretty well manicured, so I might have to ask him for some tips. I don't know what it is with the ginger fellas. It was Hendo in Cardiff. Um, <laughs> was he um, was he into his hair? Or well, no? I remember all excited he was the one day when some fan or someone gave him a bunch of beard oil. I'm like, what is that? Beard He's oil? Big, like he was known for a big beard, right? It's on his all his Hendrix stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. He was pretty proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> Some but, people, a beard is just like whatever. it's a way of life, it's right? Lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> it's like being a shed guy. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> Running a muck is a lifestyle, folks. Right? Yeah, winning, winning is uh, hard work, but heck, is it fun? Right? Yeah, you're right. It is, and I think you guys should just go ahead and do that. So I don't really know what else I got for you. Nothing really. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Best of luck to uh <laughs> all the boys in the UK. Do you yes. want to hear something funny, Denmark? Uh just so everybody can hear it. <laughs> As I did win this gold helmet with Sunderuski against Herning. Um well, I'm cheering for Herning. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> uh you didn't ask me back. <laughs> um guess i'm not that over it <laughs> uh but also i cheer for people in hockey and i cheer for shed guys and uh i wouldn't be betting against you <laughs> in any league so <laughs> you know well, what i mean appreciate it. we need we need all support we can get so it'd be good yeah i've only seen you play like once on tv but i wouldn't be betting against you because i could get a pretty good read on guys in my shed and i I wouldn't want to be on the other team playing hockey against you but i'd like to practice against you and you'd be on my team <laughs> Practice is usually fun for the boys. Some of them like to get me going, so they know they don't want, they don't want to push my buttons at this point now. So it's... <laughs> and then now it's fun, right? When they start pissing <laughs> you off, and then you piss them off, and yeah, I would be pushing your buttons. I know that if you were my goalie, I would think it's funny to push your <clears throat> buttons. Fun to get everyone just to compete just a little bit more, you know, to see how far you can go. Yeah, it's true though. I actually, when I saw Lordo years later, um, it was actually when he when I went back over there. And he told me there's a story he always told his teams <laughs> about me. And I was like, well, yeah, what's that? And we were going to play like one of those games at the end where it's like, you know, battle muck it up in the corners. <laughs> and I just yelled at everybody like, let's get some animosity up in this bitch. <laughs> and then I just crushed <laughs> a couple guys. <laughs> And then, all, the and then all of a sudden them. everybody was mucking it up and competing right and then all of a sudden it was fun it's like you go out there and you half ass it it's not really that fun no when you when you compete and you get angry at each other and then you have to talk about it and kind of <laughs> find your way through the animosity it's you become closer you do and then it comes game time and it's like well yeah we're ready <laughs> yeah. i know you're willing to battle with me and we're teammates yeah. can't imagine what we're about to do this guy Right. And then you stand there at the blue line looking at them and you're like, yeah, we're going to own your that ass. It's still the weirdest <laughs> thing in, in Europe is the, the, hey, how you doing before the game? Oh, yo, the stick up in the air. I forgot about yeah. that. 
right? Yeah. Hey, how are you? We're going to go play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If we're ready. Are you ready? Cause I'm ready. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. That wasn't a UK thing. Was it? Uh, we, I, in Cardiff, we lined, like they did the whole lineup in every building in the UK. But we didn't like raise the sticks at each other. Like, Hey, let's play. Hockey. Like, the other team lined up the blue line when we did the intros and stuff. I don't know if they raised sticks or not, but yeah. And then the, the team chant around the net. We didn't do that in Cardiff my year. Cause Richie asked me if I wanted to do that. I said, no. So we just didn't do that. Oh, where everybody stands at the net and then goes yeah. like hip, hip, hooray. Go, go team. <laughs> yeah. Do you do that in D- Denmark? Yeah, usually our captain or some someone says something. I'm usually a, on the outside of it, so I don't know. To this day, I don't know who's yelling what is going on. You're just on. into it. Sometimes it's in Danish, sometimes it's in English. So. Well, my under nine gals team, what we do, uh, we get to the bench and we go, one, two, three, Canucks, <laughs> you know, that all the Keep girls simple. together. Keep it simple. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, we got to, yeah. We're running amok, though. We're a squad. You should see us yeah. play. Yeah. Proud of the little gals. They're awesome. Usually girls are, like, pretty good skaters that age, too, though. Well, we only got, uh, geez, we only got three regular season games left and then the year-end tournament, and then it's over. It's pretty sad, actually. Year-end yeah. tournament, though. How many, like, you guys get to go away for that, or is it? Uh, that one's actually somehow local. It's not far yeah. away. Yeah, but um, we already got uh, a dad that's willing to host the year end party that weekend. So I think it may not be a bad uh, time having it local that we're going to turn it into a house party instead of a hotel party. Right. Are the girls a much of a disaster in hotels as boys hockey tournaments? Uh, well, we, so you, you want to hear about our hotel tournament? Like you getting kicked out of, are you getting kicked out of hotels with girls hockey team? Or no? Uh, well, we did play mini hockey. So I did get the squad mini hockey sticks. And I thought one of my goals in life was I'd never seen an under nine house league girls hockey team play mini hockey. And I did witness that. Um, they all had their little two L's and hockey tails, um, shirts on this weekend and their sticks. And it was pretty cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was pretty neat. Um, and then, uh, you know, mini hockey entertained them for a little bit. I wouldn't say as long as boys. Uh, but so instead, what we ended up doing in our, we rented out a conference room for the Friday night. So we didn't even play till one o'clock on Saturday. So Friday night, everybody just had at it. Kids, parents, had a time. Uh, rented a room out for the night and uh, mini hockey started it. But then it turned into a uh, talent show. So we had a talent show. The girls put on their best Singing, performance. Dancing, all yep. sorts of yeah, that's right. Uh, my new favorite songs are uh, Victoria's Secret and Green Green Grass. Uh, we have a dance to that. Uh, pretty good. I'll have to look those up. Yeah. Uh, I green, think I know green the grass, green, the whole, green grass. The whole, the whole, the whole team like starts boogieing in the locker room together. Um, and it's, they have like a dance to it. It's pretty neat. You know, right. it's, it's cool to be on a team again and get to do this stuff again. Yeah, like right? a dance, like a viral dance. I, I had imagined because they all seem to know it. Right, I don't I'll, know I'll, it. I'll have to do some research to get my yeah. research team on. Yeah. Green, green grass folks. That's what we boogie down to. Um, and we also have a mascot now, which is a little monkey. Uh, Harks brought that out. Uh, and uh, she dresses the monkey um, with a beer koozie. Um, if we're wearing our green jerseys, which are disgusting, be better. Can Carden get us orange jerseys. Um, she puts the green koozie on the monkey um, with number on the back, K on the front for Canucks. And then if we're orange, then she puts the orange koozie on. And uh, before the one game, the ref skate over to the bench to like say, hey, you know, we're going to play hockey. Woohoo. Um, and he's, he says to me, he goes, just skate by that monkey. Is that a beer koozie on that monkey? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we do it a little different here in Bruce County. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, we're a team. It's it's pretty cool because I went like five years without like a real team, and now like I'm on a team again, and like I get to build the culture and make it hockey like I want it to be hockey, and it's pretty neat. Good, good. How's Colby doing on his squad? Uh, they're pretty well done. Uh, they had a round robin. <laughs> uh, they had the only the first out of the four teams got to the round robin. They're not going to make it out. They got their last game tonight. Uh, then they got one last tournament this weekend, and then their season will be over. Um, 
but he is going to get to compete in the fastest skater event. He he's won that for his team. So he's going to compete in the fastest skater event this weekend. Uh, but he had a season, <laughs> you could say personally, he did, he did. Okay. Yeah. He scored some big ones <laughs> usually when the game was on the line and uh, he played very hard and uh Yep, I, you could say I was very proud of him and the way he played and the way he was a teammate and competed. And uh, he's into it. He he really likes hockey and he's quite good at it. <laughs> you there you say. go. Yeah, always always good to be talented at the thing you like. <laughs> yeah, it makes you like it more when you're good at it. <laughs> I don't you like sucking at stuff. To work hard when you're good at it. Yeah, and you enjoy it more when you're good at it, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, I guess, yeah, that's it. Um, that's another way we knew each other though, is you did come on and meet my squad, um, from last season, um, episode 145. That was my first year coaching the under 11 squad, where it was like a team for the whole year. And, um, I tell you, it brought back my love of hockey, being on a team and, uh, having like the funny things that go on in the locker room and like that you guys still get to do that. I, you guys should appreciate it and you should enjoy yeah. this playoff run. A special place. Doesn't matter what age you are. So yeah, you should enjoy this playoff run. You know, you don't know how many you get and uh, you should just have at it and give her, you know, yeah, you don't get many with the, with the team we got going to. So hopefully we can take advantage and I, it's like, hopefully. I've never seen the same team twice, right? There's always changes. You never have the same team twice. Anyway, ever. someone, something always happens, but uh they say you can't win the last one if you don't win the first one. So big one tomorrow. Well, yeah. One period at a time, one game at a time, one shift at a time, right? <laughs> pucks in, pucks out. Get yep. pucks in. <laughs> get it out of the blue line. Get it in at their blue line, right? <laughs> How many cliches can we rattle off here? I don't think that's what the shed's about. <laughs> <laughs> the interview, um, the that, but that's what I like about doing this so much is that when I played hockey, I don't think I acted enough like myself. I thought when I played hockey, the best was when I actually acted like Wally. Um, and uh, I think you're the same as me, man. And I think um, everybody in hockey should be who they want to be. And um, that's what I like about this is that people can actually get to know what we're really like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You got to be an entertainer sometimes, you know, I like you riding the stick, you know, and you're from Wyoming where there's like a little flare, cowboys, yeah, a little right? flare riding the bull, you know, R- riding the bull, working it. Right. Yeah, working it. Working it. <laughs> that was actually one of my drills to get like, not a drill. You couldn't call it a drill, but like when I was getting the girls to just enjoy <laughs> hockey and have fun, one of my practice things was see if you could ride your stick. <laughs> right? Ride the stick, shoot the duck. You got that? You haven't doing that one yet? I, uh, we have not shot the duck. I throw, no, I throw pylons and they have to go dive oh, yeah. on it and get it and get back. Right. Or, yeah, no, I haven't shot. They haven't shot the duck. Got to keep the gloves out of minor hockey, right? Oh, the uh, where you like go on one foot and you squat down and shoot your leg out. Oh, that shoot the duck. moon, maybe they call it in Canada. I thought you were talking about like the team of Solani shoot the duck. Oh, well, that too. Like celebrations are fun. There's a lot of <laughs> things you could do on the ice, right? To keep yeah. it fun. <laughs> we have had to work on our celebrations here with under nine gals. Is they still hadn't really got that like everybody on the ice comes and hugs each other after a goal. We're still trying to get that. But what we have nailed now is if you score, you do the trade by the bench and we're high five. And we're the only team in the league doing that. Nobody yeah, else has got good, that down. That's a good stepping stone for a celebration. The girls like it, right? Cause then everybody on the ice, even if you didn't score, they get to like celebrate too. And they get oh, to yeah. go by the bench you're and up everybody. You're you are. You're part of it. And the next thing I need to get them doing is everybody hugs each other before we go to the train because you all scored together, right? That guy doesn't score without the other people on the ice. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hockey, folks. And then you do the train and involve everybody else, right? I'm like, look at what we did. <laughs> now you go do it. Yeah. Your turn. We're coming off. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> I'm tired. You go. Conditioning's an issue again. Um, <laughs> but seriously, uh, love our time together. Um, thank you for making time for me again. No um, thank you. And good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next time I see you. Gold helmet on. Correct, sir. And this has been another episode of Zero Ls of Hockey Tales with Mac and Wally. <laughs>